Hi friend, it's me, Kylie. I'm so excited you're here right now because my family and I just got home from somewhere amazing and I wanna tell you all about it. Today, we decided to go to an aquarium. Have you ever been to an aquarium? It's a place where there's all these fish tanks, small ones, huge ones. This aquarium even had fish tanks that we could walk inside of. Didn't you get all wet, you ask? No, because there was like tunnels built in them. It was amazing. Don't worry, friend. I took lots of videos so you could see it too. Check it out. Aren't all these underwater creatures amazing? Doesn't it make you want to make some art? Me too. To the studio! Welcome to the studio! Are you excited to make some under the sea creatures? I am. I'm going to draw them, outline them, and then paint them with watercolors. Watercolors seem to make sense to me because you know, like water, watercolor, like fish, water, watercolors. <laughs> You can color yours in with whatever you want, but watercolors can be a really fun way to get some really interesting colors and effects. Stay tuned. First, we're gonna draw. We're going to use basic shapes, shapes we all know, to make some complex sea creatures. Most of drawing is just learning to see the basic shapes and going from there. We're gonna start with a starfish. guess what the basic shape we're going to start with on a starfish is? Hint, starfish, a star. 
Now that we have the basic shape of our starfish, I'm gonna go in and build off that. I'm gonna add some curves and make some areas a little wider to make it look more like a starfish. Ready? Let's do it. Now that my outline is the way I want it, I'm gonna use a black marker to outline my final lines. With that done, I can go in and erase the rest. I don't need it anymore. Here it is, ready to paint. I'm using watercolors like I said. Watercolors come in two different forms. This is a watercolor palette that you might have seen at school or maybe even have at home. It comes with the watercolors already filled up and dry in these little wells in a palette. The other kind of watercolor that I love to use are these watercolors that come in little tubes. Now for this one, you're going to need a palette. I use a different kind of palette for watercolor paints than I do for my acrylic paints. Why is that? Because they are more watery. So you'll see this palette has little wells in it like this one does. We just get to fill it up ourselves. A little bit of this paint goes a long way so you don't need to fill it up super full. The nice thing about this kind of watercolor is even if it dries out, once you get it wet again, you can reuse it just like that palette. Acrylic paint, you can't do that. There are so many different ways you can use watercolor paint that are so fun. But today we're gonna start with a wash. So I'm gonna take a plain brush, no paint on it, just water, and fill in the body of my starfish. Then I'm going to get a little orange paint on my brush. And all I need to do is just tap where I put my water. This will start spreading all through the puddle of water I made, but not past it. I'm gonna put a little yellow in. Starfish come in all kinds of different shapes and sizes. There's over 2,000 kinds of starfish that we know about. Some starfish can have up to 40 arms. If you're getting a puddle of paint that is just too much, that's fine. Just take a little bit of paper towel and soak it right up. Ooh, in fact, that looks pretty cool. I'm gonna do that all around my starfish to give it a little more texture. I love it. Let's put our starfish aside so it can dry and we will draw our next creature. The next creature I'm going to draw is a jellyfish. I thought these were so interesting at the aquarium and I loved how they were lit up with black light so they almost seemed magical and ghostly. The basic shape that I'm gonna use for my jellyfish is a semicircle. Straight line, and then a half circle. Then I'm gonna add some little semicircles for kind of the frill on the edge. And then I'm gonna draw some lines, just wavy ones, the tentacles. Then I'll just expand these out. Now that that's done, I'm going to outline with my black marker. Time to paint. A jellyfish swims by squirting water out of its mouth. Isn't that crazy? It squirts water and that shoots it forward. Jellyfish have tiny stinging cells in their tentacles. They use these to stun their prey. They shock them so that their prey gets really still and then they can eat them easier. Inside the semicircle that we drew, the bell shape of their body is an opening that's the mouth. So they pick up their prey after they've stunned it with their tentacles and they put it right in their mouth. Awesome, I love it and I can't wait till it's dry so I can add a couple more things with my marker. 
One of the things we all loved the most at the aquarium were the sea turtles. They were amazing. And there was a spot where we could walk in a tunnel that looked like we were underwater and the sea turtle could swim right over our head. It was incredible. Our basic shape when we draw the sea turtle is an oval. Now that the oval's drawn, we're gonna add some other shapes to complete this sea turtle. This oval is gonna end up being its shell. To make the design on its shell, we are going to draw some hexagons. Do you know how many sides a hexagon has? Six. Hexagon. Kinda looks like a soccer ball. <laughs> a semicircle for the head, and also semicircles for the flippers. Last but not least, a little triangle for the tail. I have learned a lot about sea turtles since we've been home because we've checked out a lot of sea turtle books from the library. My favorite thing about sea turtles is that they lay their eggs in a nest in the sand. And then when the group of eggs hatch, the little tiny turtles come out and then they run into the sea. It is like the cutest thing I have ever seen. Another thing I learned about sea turtles that makes them different from turtles you might find in the land is that sea turtles don't go into their shells like land turtles do. You know how a turtle will put its head and its legs into its shell to keep it safe? Sea turtles don't do that. So cute. Next. Let's do an animal that kind of scared me at first, but once I got to know it, I really liked it. A stingray. Our basic shape for the stingray is going to be a triangle. Then I'll build off that basic shape by just softening the edges a little bit and adding a tail. There are many different kinds of rays, including stingrays, which that's what I normally call them, but there's other kinds too. Electric rays, butterfly rays, round rays, manta rays, guitar fish, and sawfish, what? The eyes on a stingray are on the top of their body and their mouth and their gills are underneath. Cool. This will be another really fun one to add more details to once it's dry. One of my favorite fish was at the museum. It was a clownfish, you know, those little orange and white ones. They're fun to draw too. We're gonna start again with an oval. Then I'm gonna add a tail. Clownfish have stripes on them, so we're gonna add those stripes in. And then a little semicircle on top of each stripe for a fin. And on the bottom too. Another little fin right here. Make this more into a triangle. There he is. Did you know that there are 30 different kinds of clownfish that we know about? There might even be more. I also learned at the aquarium that clownfish are omnivores. This means that they eat meat. That's it, so cute. Time for a shark. I'm gonna do a long semicircle for my shark. Just like that. I'm gonna add sort of a crescent shape on the tail for the back, and then a big triangle for the shark's big fin. I have some more down here too. Here's some things I learned about sharks at the aquarium. Number one, they don't have 
bones. I also learned that sharks have very good eyesight. They can see so well, even when it's dark, they can see colors. Next up, I'm gonna draw a seahorse. I thought these were so cool at the aquarium. They were tiny and detailed and beautiful and so graceful. Our basic shape is going to be kind of an S shape. Now, build onto that. Semicircle, semicircle. This will make the head. Yeah, I like that. I learned that grown up seahorses eat 30 to 50 times a day. What? 30 to 50 times a day. Breakfast, lunch, breakfast, lunch, dinner, dinner, breakfast, lunch. Blah, 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 blah. The snout of a seahorse is how they suck food up. They suck it up into their mouth like a little vacuum cleaner. While all of our sea creatures dry, I thought we could paint them a habitat. A habitat is where an animal, or person I guess, lives. So I'm going to make an under the sea painting. So excited. Since we made underwater creatures today, the habitat we're making is underwater. Over 70% of the earth is covered in water and most of it is salt water. If an animal lives in salt water, that means that its habitat is called a marine habitat. The habitats found under ocean water can still be very different. They're different depending on how warm or cold the temperature of the water is, how deep it is, and how far it is from the shore. Warmer water has coral reefs and is full of small and bright colored fish. Cold water has less species of animals that can live in it. Scientists guess that there are about one million different species of animals that live in our oceans. Now that I have some plants and creatures on my seafloor, I'm gonna do a huge wash of blue. Your paintings are dry, so it's time to add our final details. And I know, I know I use a lot of googly eyes, but I did just get a fresh batch. Look at these! I gotta use them. I gotta use them! Can you blame me? How cute is that? So cute. <laughs> I mean, that's a friendly looking shark, isn't it? <laughs> This isn't actually what the face of a jellyfish is like, but for my art today, this is what I'm making it like. And last but not least, our turtle friend. Now that they're all done and I put those googly eyes on and I'm looking at them, I do have to say, I regret nothing. They're adorable. <laughs> Time to add a little detail to the background. Sea anemones look like flowers, but they're not plants, they're animals. 1,500 different kinds of anemones are found around the world. 
coral grows in shallow areas of the ocean because, like a plant outside of the water, it also needs sunlight to grow. Some of the larger coral reefs we have are super old, like between 5,000 and 10,000 years old. Seaweed, which looks a lot like grass, but it doesn't have roots like grass, is a type of algae, and they actually create most, about 70% of the world's oxygen. That means much of what you and I are breathing and need to live right now was created by one of these little seaweeds. It's done. Are you ready to place our sea creatures? I am. Okay. Let's see. First, clownfish. Let's put him right here in the sea anemone. Starfish on the ocean floor. Sea turtle way up high. How about our jellyfish? Hmm. Maybe hanging out over here. Yeah. Shark? Hmm. We can put him by the clownfish because he's a friendly shark. Ah, uh, seahorse we'll put here in the seaweed. And how about our ray, our stingray? Hmm. Looks like we need someone right here. The coolest thing about doing it this way is we can move them around until we're absolutely sure where we want them before we glue them down. There we go. I think this is how I want it. Now I'm gonna glue my creatures down so everything is nice and flat. I love it. What do you think? It's like I'm back at the aquarium, except in an illustrated version. Hi friend, it's Kylie. I'm so excited that you're here today because you and I are going to do something very special. We're gonna go meet my friend, Super D. Super D is an artist and he's a very special kind of artist. He's a cartoonist. Check it out. These are some of Super D's characters. Look. He imagined these characters in his mind. He drew them out, made them on the computer, and then he tells stories with words and pictures that are called cartoons. He is amazing and I'm so excited for you to meet him. In fact, look, this is his cartoon drawing of himself. <laughs> are you ready to go to his studio? Let's do it. Here we are, we're at Super D's studio and I can't wait for you to meet him. Come on. Hey, Super D. Hi, Kylie. How are you? Wow, I'm so good. Thank you so much for having us in your studio. No problem. Thanks <gasps> for joining. This is amazing. Can you show us around? Yeah, absolutely. This over here is where I keep all my sources of inspiration from oh, video yeah. games, art made by friends, uh, books I like to read. I love Garfield, so I keep a lot of Garfield books yes, here. Yes, I see. Look at all this Garfield, friends. Uh, I'm friends with Jim Davis and a bunch of his Paws Inc. cartoonists. They have been really nice to me and have also, you know, like shared a bunch of guidance and stuff in terms of how to be a cartoonist. Wow. And so that's how uh, I keep up with my sources of inspiration is by just having this foundation of things that make me happy, you know? Yeah. Who's this? That is my character, Plush Maria. What? She is an absolute unit that does whatever she wants. <laughs> You created this character out of your mind, and now I can pick her up? Yep. Wow. Please, please, please show us how you make this stuff. Absolutely. Come on, Plush Maria. <laughs> so this over here is my little workshop space where wow. I make my comics. So you make a lot of your comics on the computer. Mm-hmm. But I also work traditionally, too. So when I start with making comics, I like to sketch out everything. 
I have a few sketchbooks where I keep ideas and stuff of just words or phrases that I think would be fun to make into a comic. Yeah. And then once I get a good idea, such as the word lethargy. Lethargy. <laughs> lethargy, yeah. I think of that idea and go, how can I convert that into a comic? So then I end up, once I get the idea of a comic, I start sketching it out. And then like the sketch phase is just yeah. where I just go, okay, I just have the basic idea of what I want to draw and how I'm going to write it out. And when I get, when I do that, then it goes into my Rosebud's uh, comic template. Cool. Once I get done with that and it's all finalized and I, I self approve it. Then I go over here to my art station where I start uh, working on the full fledged comic. As I said, every comic starts out with just an initial sketch. So when I work on comics, I always start out with just a little, a little sketch, a little white sketching, just to get the, just to get the idea of how I want the art to be look like. Once I do that for all the panels I want for the comic, then I start on the ink layer, which oh. is where. I finalize my sketch art and put all the words into one location. Once I do that, I add on the colors. Then I add on little extra details like screen tones, which are little dots to help make the comic pop out a bit. Oh, wow. And once I do that, I put the words on <gasps> and the comic is done. This was his sketch, and then he created the whole comic right on his computer. When I finish the comics, Rosebuds is in a really fun position where it's also a newspaper comic, like Garfield, Peanuts, Calvin yeah, and Hobbes. Yeah. So when I get done with that, I send the comic to the newspaper, which then gets printed for everyone to see. A real comic! in a real newspaper. Super D, you are so cool. <laughs> no. That's amazing. Who are these people up here? Ah, these two are Pen and Ink. This one here is Pen. She's 19. She's kind of the main leader of uh -huh. their group. Uh, and this is her little sister, Ink. She's three years old. And <laughs> you can kind of tell the contrast between the two. Ink is the embodiment of Messi. She loves to play. She loves to paint. She uses her ponytail as her paintbrush, which is why she has a little black ink <laughs> on the back of her ponytail. I love that. And so the whole in, the whole thing about their comics is that they are the creators of it. The comics are made oh. by Penny and Inkari Uart, which is their full names. Their nicknames are just Pen and Ink. And so the comics are all about them exploring the world of art, their relationship with each other as sisters, and just having fun with being creative. And it's all from their point of view. Like the art that you see in this book is supposed to be made by them. That's an amazing idea. Would you be willing to show us how to draw a cartoon? Yeah, absolutely. Do you want to? Okay. Are you ready to learn how to draw a cartoon from a real life cartoonist? <laughs> <laughs> Me too. All you need to draw with us is some paper, a pen or pencil, and... An imagination. Imagination. How do we start? Well, what would you like to draw? I think Plush Maria. All right, yeah. So Plush Maria, her entire character is just based on, is based entirely on simple shapes. Okay. Like her head, it's just a circle. So let's go ahead and just draw a circle. I can draw a circle. Next, her body. Her body is also really simple. It's just a giant marshmallow. A marshmallow? <laughs> yeah, just a big marshmallow. Okay. Now, her arms are like little tubes with a little circle at the end of it, like so. And you can have it, you can have it loop her down like this. Yeah, think of like spaghetti noodles for her arms. Okay. Like that? Yeah, perfect. With a circle. Mm-hmm. And so we're going to do her world famous absolute unit walk. Okay. <laughs> so first we start off with 
her right leg over here and we're just going to have it look like a little boot. Her entire her entire leg looks just like a like a sock is a better example. A sock. Yeah, just looks like a sock. And like that. Okay, kind of like straight out. Okay. Yeah. Now, her left leg is going to be like the sock, except a little more bent back, right. like so. Oh, wow. That makes it look like she's walking. walking. Cool. It kind of looks like a lightning bolt or a Z or something. Yeah. All right, let me see. Okay, and then I go like this, like a little L, mm -hmm. and then choop. okay. And so now we're gonna add on a little bit more detail to her. So uh, what I like to start off with, she wears a flower headband. So I always like to start out with the flower on top of her head, like it has six little nubs on it. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, one, two, And also on the inside, there's a little G inside. Hmm, okay, it's kind of a fancy G. It's a very fancy it's G. It's made out of straight lines instead of a curve. Yes. All right, G, G, got it, got it, got it. We're gonna start off with a little, a little curve near the flower to signify her hair. All right, right here. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to start off with another little, I won't say a lightning bolt, but it helps showcase where her ear is at, which is like right here. All right, so it's kind of a straight line that curves just a little bit. Yes. Now for here, this will be just a half circle for her ear, and it's a really big ear. Okay. <laughs> like so. Oh, wow. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to go past the circle we made for her head. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Now we're gonna do another big curve around here, around her, over her, uh, her flower to signify her hairband. And then we're gonna make a straight up loop and have it connect to the curve that we just made over here. Okay, this feels tricky. Okay. You got this. <laughs> Doesn't need to be perfect. We're just practicing. Perfect. Okay. That's cool. really good. Then we're going to go ahead and have the flower head being connect back with another curve. We're going to have it connect to her ear like so. All right. So I come up here and go like that. And then over here, we'll do a backward C for her other ear. And the final thing for her hair is it's going to be just a big wavy loop to signify that her hair is moving. Wow, it's amazing how a simple line can show so much. Right? Like that line is still, but because of how you drew it, it looks like it's in motion. Mm -hmm. I love that. <laughs> okay, let's see if I can do it. Mm, okay, you do a big one like this. And now, her face. And now this is the most iconic part, so we have to be careful about this. Yes, you gotta get it right. Yes. <laughs> so, we, for her eyes, we draw two ovals. All right. An oval here. And, oh, it doesn't look big enough. It's okay, it's okay. Okay. Now we'll do, an upside down smile for her nose. I like that. Then just a little, a little, it's not a big smile, it's just a small smile. That's, oh, yeah. that's the tricky part. Yeah, okay. She's not too happy, she's just... Yeah. <laughs> All right. You got this. Okay, thanks. 
Perfect. Now for her eyes, we'll have we'll go into the center of the ovals and just draw two straight lines, like so. Wow. And then two dots for eyes. Those simple lines give her such an amazing facial expression, don't they? <laughs> yeah. Okay. We're going to go back to her arms real quick to okay. give her sleeves so that we can show that she's wearing a shirt. And then for her marshmallow body, we'll go back and draw another line towards the bottom so that way we can signify she's wearing pants too. Cool. And then just above, we're going to go back to the feet real quick and show little curves like so to show the continue off to wearing pants. I like how you make these lines a little bit curved instead of perfectly straight because it makes it look like her legs and her tummy and her arms are round. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Just a little curve makes it look round instead of flat. Yeah, exactly. We're going to do a curve under her foot and draw two lines under them. Okay, let's see. That shows the bottom of her shoe. Uh. One more thing. Okay. So, Plush Marie, as you see on Plush Marie's shirt here, she wears something that says absolute unit. But the special thing about Plush Marie is that her sh every shirt that you see her in is always different. Oh. Meaning that you can have her wear whatever word, funny word you can think of on her shirt. Cool. So as long as it's funny, you can write it on there. I have an idea. And then we're just going to finalize, give her a little shadow under her, under her to show that she's walking. And then we're going to go ahead and color her shoes, her pants and her hair black. Okay. And don't worry about being perfect. Because Plush Marie is just all about being simple and fun. We like that. I am going to do... Just need you to stand right there and smile. Love it. It's me and Plush Maria going on an absolute adventure. <laughs> it looks just like me. <laughs> Hi friend, it's me, Kylie. And I am so excited that you're here today because something magical is about to happen. Wanna know why? There's something in the Maker Box. I love Maker Box days, don't you? Okay, let's check it out. It's the biggest paintbrush I have. <laughs> I love this one for painting big, thick lines. But... How did that fit in here? What? I feel like something very magical must be going on. You like magic tricks? I do too. And my favorite thing about them is they're tricks. Like an illusion. An illusion is when things look different than they really are. Like this illusion that I did here today, it looked magical, didn't it? Like the maker box could have huge things in it that would never fit in a normal sized maker box. But it was a trick. Things are not always as they up here. <laughs> there was no bottom. That's how I did it. Do you know 
that there are illusions in art too. In the 1960s, there was this whole movement of art called op art or optical art. And that movement of art used the elements of art like line and pattern and shape and value to create tricks on people's eyes. Check it out! Op art or optical art was famous for tricking people's eyes. When you look at it, it looks like it has three dimensions, height, width, and depth, even though it only has two. The lines and patterns in the op art look like they're moving even though they're perfectly still. Some famous artists from the op art movement are MC Escher and Bridget Riley. But there's many more. There's artists who are even using line, shape, value, and pattern today to make op art. In fact, you may know of an artist this very moment who's about to make some op art. Any ideas? It's me. <laughs> Do you want to go to the studio table and draw or paint? Some op art with me? Let's do it. To the studio! Are you ready to make some magic? I sure am. Art is so amazing. <laughs> so cool. Okay, I'm gonna show you a couple different ways to make some op art drawings today. I'm gonna show you on this big paper, but you might wanna use some littler paper at home. I just want you to really be able to see it. The first one we're gonna do is with circles. We're gonna make these circles look like they're coming up out of the page, like they're spherical, even though they're just gonna be flat. We're gonna do that using pattern. The first thing we're gonna do is trace some circles. Now that we have our circles traced, we're gonna make some straight lines using ruler. Because my paper's so big, I'm using this yardstick. If you have a little ruler and a little paper, that'll work just fine. I'm gonna use my ruler to make sure that all of my lines are evenly spaced. So I'm just gonna decide how big I want them to be, and then I'll just make some marks on each side of my paper and then use the ruler to draw them up. I'm gonna draw a line straight across, but I'm gonna skip the circles. Do not draw a line in your circle. Don't do it. Cool. Now I have my lines going horizontally. I'm gonna make some lines going vertically, also three inches apart, so that I make a grid of squares. Now is the magical part. We get to make some lines on our circles that are a little bit different than the lines on our grid. I'm gonna start by making a straight line right across the middle of each circle. So far, all the lines we've drawn have been straight, but this is where the magic starts to happen. We're going to bend our lines. They're still gonna be two dimensional, but because we add some curve into them, it's gonna start to look like an optical illusion. One way you can think about this is to think about an actual ball. This is a three dimensional sphere, it's not flat. You can imagine that you're using your pen to draw a line around the curve of the ball. So, Whenever I draw on the sphere, my pen is going to have to curve. I'm gonna start from this middle line, bending it slightly in the middle, just kind of following this curve. So I'll start over here, and I'll bend my line a little bit. Then I'll mirror that on the other side so that it's symmetrical. Symmetrical means same thing on both sides. Now I'm gonna do one more line on each side, bending it a little bit more so it fits right in that space. Ready? Boom. 
by curving these lines, we're making this look like it's a whole curved sphere instead of a flat circle. That's kind of the trick. Now I'm gonna do the same thing vertically. I'm gonna leave my middle line out just to lend to the illusion. Okay, so I'm gonna just start with like these lines that we drew, like this, ready? Curved a little. Curved a little. And now I'm gonna fill it in just like we did when we went horizontally. Boom. This might be a little hard to do at first, but if you keep practicing, you could totally get it and make some amazing art. Done. The lines are drawn. Now it's time to fill them in to make a pattern. A lot of the early op art in the 1960s was just black and white. There are a lot of colored pieces as well, but we're just gonna stay classic here and just fill this in with black and white. The first thing I'm gonna do is color in the background grid. And the pattern I'm gonna use is just a basic black and white check. It kind of looks like a tile floor in like a diner or something. So the pattern is just black, white, black, white, black, white. Easy, right? All right, let's get to it! Oh my goodness, this is gonna take forever. I'm gonna use paint. Okay, let's try this again. Oh yeah. Moving to the next square, we're gonna leave it white. We have our first row done. Black, white, black, white, black, white. What do we do on the next row, you might wonder? Well, we think about our pattern not just going horizontally, but also vertically. So black, white, black, white, black, white. So if this one's white, what color will this one be? Black, you got it. Which one? Black. The background pattern is done. Now we're gonna go in and make a pattern on our spheres. We're gonna use the same pattern, black, white, black, white, black, white, but we're gonna follow the contour of our circle. This can be a little bit hard for me to get my mind around while I'm painting. So I like to go through and put a little black in each section that's going to all be black at one time. And then when I go in and do the details, I don't really have to think about it. Time to paint. easy, but it's so magical. Let's finish these other two spheres. The patterns are done. I think that this looks amazing, just like this but there's one other thing I want to try. We used line and pattern to make this optical illusion. 
Now let's add in some shades and tints to take it one step further. I need some white paint, stay there. Now I have a puddle of white and I'm going to add a highlight onto my spheres. With my paintbrush, I'm gonna take this white and following the contour that I already drew, I'm gonna add just a little white space like that. This is gonna make it look like the light is shining off the top of the sphere. Cool. Now I'm gonna mix up a gray, so white with a little bit of black in it. And I'm gonna add a shadow on the bottom of each sphere. And there you go. Do you feel the magic? <laughs> I sure do. This looks awesome. <gasps> hey, I had so much fun making this one in black and white. I was wondering if you wanted to make one in color with me. Do you want to? Okay, awesome. Hey, if you wanna make this drawing but you're a little nervous about making all the lines and circles and contours and stuff, that's fine. You can go to kyliemakesit.com and go on the kids page. If you go to the kids page, you're gonna find coloring pages with the lines for these two drawings already done so that all you need to worry about is the patterns and coloring them in. And then you can make the magic too. Are you ready to make an optical illusion op art in color? I know I am. Okay, we're gonna still start in black and white. So I have my big piece of white paper, but you can use your own smaller one, or you can skip this part and get the printable at kyliemakesit.com. But I'm gonna start with a Sharpie and I'm gonna draw about eight kind of wavy lines vertically down my paper. So get feeling wavy. You wavy? All right, I am too. Okay, ready? Loosey goosey, ready? Oh, one, oh yeah. Two, three, four, that one was crazy. Five, six, seven, and I'll do one more right here. Eight. Cool. Now, cap your Sharpie for just a second. We're gonna use a pencil for this part because we're gonna end up erasing this line. We have eight vertical lines. We're gonna draw one wavy horizontal line about at the middle. Ready? Just like that. Now you'll see that these lines connect at certain points. I'm gonna just make little points so you can see a little bit better. and then we'll kind of imagine a point over here and over here. Great. Now we're gonna take our Sharpie and we're going to make curved lines to connect the dots that I made where the lines intersect. If we're above this horizontal line, we're gonna curve our lines up. If we're below the horizontal line, we're gonna curve our lines down. Watch, I'll go up first, so. Sound effects really help this one. Oh, here's a big one. Get ready. Oh, we made it. Ooh, this is fun. Okay, now we're gonna go on the bottom, so we're gonna curve down. Just like that. Awesome. Now we can erase that pencil line. We don't need it anymore. Goodbye, pencil line. Thank you for your help. Okay, now we're gonna take our Sharpie and we're gonna continue the curves all the way up and down each column. So we're just gonna follow the lines that we made. Again, if we're on the top of that line, we're gonna curve up. If we're on the bottom of that line, we're gonna curve down. Let's do it. We 
we're gonna use pattern and value to make this optical illusion. Value is a scale of a color from dark to light. So what we're gonna do to make this look more curvy, even though we already did the curved lines to add to that, when we're closer to the vertical lines, we're gonna make this darker. As we get in toward the middle, we're gonna make it lighter. I'm using colored pencils. So the way that you change value with colored pencils is you press in harder and you keep all your color really close together. The way you make a colored pencil less dark is to lighten up. You don't press as hard. So let's start on this little one right here. Like I said, in the corners, I want it to be really dark. And as I go toward the middle, I want it to lighten up. Back in this corner, very dark. So I'm gonna start really pressing this in really hard in both corners, okay? See how dark that is? Then, as I get out to about here, I'm gonna press down a little lighter. Then, for the middle, I'm gonna go lightest of all until I just have one white stripe in the middle. You see how that starts to look kind of sloped? I'm gonna keep doing that for every stripe. And I'm gonna do a pattern of every other color. So I'll do one that's blue and let's say purple for this stripe. So for purple, I'm gonna start in really dark on the sides. And then I'm gonna start Pressing a little lighter. A little lighter, a little lighter. Until there's just that one highlight in the middle. I'm gonna do this for this whole strip. to my next column. I'm using orange and yellow. I'm just doing the same thing. Dark on the sides, lighter, lightest in the middle. This is going to create my whole optical illusion. This drawing is gonna take me quite a while. In fact, it's almost time for me to get Dax from school. I'm gonna have to come back to this another time. Don't worry, I'll bring you with me. When I did our first optical illusion with black and white, I picked paint because it would be faster and it would really fill up those grids really nicely. But I picked colored pencils for this one on purpose. One reason is I really like how you can make different values with colored pencils. But another reason is they're kind of slow. Sometimes I like making art really fast. Sometimes I like making art that's gonna take a little while, that's gonna take some patience. It's good to practice being patient because so many times in the world we have to be patient when we don't want to. Sometimes it's really good to practice being patient when we're doing something we really like doing, like drawing. Also, I feel like we do so many things in a day. Think about it. You wake up, you eat breakfast, you get ready, you go to school or wherever you go and it's just like go, 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 one thing after another. And even though it's really fun, sometimes it can kind of stress you out. You're just going all the time. So sometimes art can also be a way to just help us slow it down and just do something that's beautiful, feels good, and is relaxing. One more. One more for now, but don't worry, I'll be back.
finally got all the colors done on our amazing wavy op art drawing. Look at this. It looks like each column is rounded even though it's perfectly flat. This took me a while to do, but I love how it turned out. Have you ever done anything that took a ton of patience, like it took you a couple days to make it? It's the best feeling when it's finally done and all that hard work paid off, isn't it? Hi, it's rainy here today, so I'm just looking at a book. I like reading, especially when it's a little rainy and cold outside. Do you like to read? Yeah. I love how someone writes a book because they have an idea in their mind and then they write it down and maybe illustrate it, like draw pictures for it, and then we get to read it and then the idea from their mind is in our mind. It is so awesome. I have an idea for us today. Do you want to write and illustrate a book together? Let's do it. Let's go. Are you ready to write a story together? I am. Sometimes when I write a story, I need a little bit of help coming up with ideas. Sometimes I have one right away. Sometimes I need some help. That's okay. I'm gonna show you something that I use to help me write stories sometimes. I call them story dice. Oh, the seal sang to an apple, a seal, Sang to an apple. A seal smelled a pineapple. An octopus jumped over a lemon. An owl sang to a strawberry. How do you think that song went? Ooh, 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 strawberry. Ooh, ooh, maybe. A dog painted grapes. A dog painted grapes. First thing we're gonna do is cover our cardboard with glue. Make sure you get the edges. Now that I have glue on my cardboard, I'm gonna use a paintbrush to smooth it out. Cool. Now I'm gonna flip them around and stick them to this paper. There's the cover. Here's the back cover. And here's the spine. Now I'm gonna take some glue and put it on the outside edges. Then I'm gonna wrap it over the cardboard. The outside of our cover is done. Let's do the inside pages. You can do this with a stapler or you can sew it together. I'm using a protractor, the pointy part, to make some holes in my paper. I'm going to make three holes, just like that. I'm gonna sew my pages together. Make one big loop down. Go back to the middle. Make one big loop up. And then just keep doing that. Two more times. Perfect. Now I'm gonna take some glue, run it right down the middle, and then on the sides of this smaller piece, 
and attach it to the spine of my book. And then to the sides of my cover. We're almost ready to start writing and drawing in our book. We have one step left. We're just gonna cover up this part with the inside pages. Lots of glue. Look at our amazing book ready for us to write and illustrate our story in. The first thing I'm gonna do is take all my words from our big notebook and put them onto each page. I put all of the words that we wrote from the story dice in the book, and then I had a couple extra pages, so I made it a little more interesting. Should I read it to you now or should I wait? I'm gonna wait. First, we're gonna make some of the illustrations for our book together. Do you know that some artists have jobs that are to illustrate books for kids and adults? Illustrations are pictures that are painted or drawn or created on a computer that go into books to help us imagine what something looks like and to help tell the story. You and I are gonna use the words that we wrote together to now make pictures together to go with the words. Okay, first page. A seal sang to an apple. Okay. Let's start by drawing our seal. I drew the first time in pencil, just in case I made any mistakes and wanted to go back and correct it. Now that I like how it looks, I'm going to color it with colored pencils. A seal sang to an apple. <laughs> I'm going to keep making illustrations. When the book is all done, do you want to join me in the purple chair so we can read it together? See you soon. finished our book. Are you ready to see the title and the cover? All right, ready? It's called Two Seals, an Octopus, Owl, and a Dog. Written and illustrated by Kylie. Are you excited to read it? Thanks, I'm excited to read it to you. <coughs> Two Seals, an Octopus, Owl, and a Dog. Written and illustrated by Kylie. A seal sang to an apple. Apple! A seal smelled a pineapple. What do you think a pineapple smells like? Probably like pineapple. 
an octopus jumped over a lemon. <laughs> an owl sang to a strawberry. Ooh, ooh, strawberry. A dog painted grapes. Look, in my illustration, I put HB on his collar. They were all a little lonely. Seal and an apple, seal and a pineapple, octopus and a lemon, owl and a strawberry, and dog and his grape painting. They were all doing things, but they were doing things apart. They felt a little sad, like they missed their friends. So, the seal took his apple, and the other seal took her pineapple, see it in her backpack. The octopus grabbed the lemon, the owl flew with the strawberry, and the dog ran with her grapes to a picnic all together. The end. Did you like it? I loved writing it. I loved making art with you, and I loved reading it to you. Making stories is so fun, and making the drawings for stories, that's just as fun. I always have fun with you, and I'm so excited for whatever we do next. See you then.